Peace, peace, peace. As always, I address my people with the promise of doing the best that I can when it comes to articulating my message so everybody can comprehend what I have to say. Now, I was a little taken aback by a video that I saw, that I viewed, that I watched a couple of times a little while ago by a brother named Hassan, Poppy, you know, brother from uptown who through his videos, I've come to know of his message, right? And I always took what he said as truth. Even reached out a couple of times when he felt that he was under attack, where his life was in danger. Never got a response from the brother. You know, so I just chalked it up as nervous dude. Don't know who's really for him. He done ran through the streets, social media. He can't trust no one. So I got it. Dug it. You know, cat don't know me. But in this video that he put out, he made some very discerning statements about people who protest or protesters, you know, and that kind of touched the nerve. Like I always say, black men are sensitive. That's why so many bodies drop. That's why so many are quick to grab a weapon and let it go. Don't care who's involved, who get hurt. That's why domestic violence against black women is such a, at a high rate because black men are sensitive and they don't address their sensitivities. They don't control that. They get emotional. And in the video, the brother started off very emotional because there was some emotions that he was dealing with. And I can understand that. Why? Because I'm in the line of work. I am in the mission of saving lives. So the brother said that his friend, very good friend, excuse me, just lost his daughter to gun violence. That four people were struck in the Bronx and one of them happened to be this 24 year old sister who lost her life. And to that brother who I don't know, I send my deepest condolences from me and I'm sure as well as the community of humanity. But you see, this is what happens when people don't take heed to the messages that are out there. The messages of love, integrity, togetherness, right? Something that this individual Hassan was raised on through the Zulu nation. And I'm sure of those principles. I study just like I studied the math of the 5% nation of gods and earths. Just like I studied the Quran, the Kitab, just like I studied the Bible, just like I studied the Torah, just like I study and study and study. So I know the principles of which this man comes from. So in the video, he called people bozos for protesting. That's deep. Protesting because while his friend lost his daughter, no one was out there. Nobody's been protesting. Nobody raising flags because it was what he considered real street niggas killing street niggas, black on black. None of us in Brooklyn were aware of that. But yet he chose to say that while we are out here protesting what happened to the sister Christina Thomas in the nail salon, why weren't we protesting something as serious as black on black gun violence? So homeboy, brother, Aki, however you want to be titled, I'm saying this with the most sincerity that me, 
since I'm one of the only other brothers that I've seen out there in front of that nail salon have to believe that you're addressing it to me or the brother Tony Lindsay. We've been the only two out there. And we've seen a couple of local politicians out there here and there. But me and that brother have been consistent. So a little history about me. You see, I'm on a mission with a program called Cure Violence. Do you know of it? You should, because they have several Cure Violence sites in the Bronx, right? And I know that because, see, the Orange is SOS Brooklyn, right? Stop shooting. The Black Band is from Guns Down Life Up, uptown and in the Bronx. The Green is from Bull City, right? They follow the same program out in Durham, North Carolina, just to hip you up. Now, the program is an anti-gun violence program, right? So you can be informed and know that there are people out there combating gun violence, unnecessary gun violence, that is. Unnecessary gun violence. Every day, all day, in neighborhoods all around, not only the United States, but the world. We train people to do it. People like us, who used to participate in gun violence. Unnecessary gun violence. Me, myself, I'm not only a outreach worker trained to do this, but I'm also a hospital responder. So when these bodies come in the ER, I'm right there with the surgeon. To console a family. To remedy what any trauma they may have as a family, also with the patient, if the patient survives, and provide all type of resources. So if they're in a street organization or a gang or in a lifestyle that keeps them in front of gun violence, I'm right there, right here, talking to talk, to deter them from that lifestyle. How long have I been doing it? Since about 2010. Almost a decade, homeboy. Putting in serious work. Hours. In the hospital shift. Oh, homeboy, I'm there from 4 p.m. to midnight and beyond some nights. While you probably out making your videos or sleep. I'm there fighting the fight. Now, I don't know. Christina Thomas never met the sister at all. But I'm there to support her. Because that's what I do. Just like I support families who suffer from gun violence. Just like how I've turned youngins who were banging their hammer on a regular basis into people who have more value in their lives in the lives of everybody else in the community by not doing it. Took them from that to somebody who's working a nine to five or whatever and trying to establish dreams to help them get up out of the system that we're all a part of. But you call people who protest bozos. You call those women, those sisters who are some grandmothers, right? You call them bozos. Why? Why bozos? Why that term? Because they're protesting. You also said that they were, and these are your words, having their strings pulled. And that's why they were the only reason why they were out there. Wow. That's big. Because you see, a lot of them coming from work, they're sacrificing their Saturdays and Sundays to get out there and get the message out. Because that's what people have to do. That's the process. Because everybody's not going to bang their hammer against the oppressor. If you need lessons about gangs and gang violence and how they start, there's a book for you. City of Quartz, Mike Davis. Do some reading on that so you can know about what this newfangled era of gang violence is in New York City. Blood in my eye. This is a Bible for me.
read it so you can learn about the revolutionary process. Also, pedagogy of the oppressed, right? So you can learn how everybody's not on the same level at the same time, right? Also, since you really need to know, here go a dying colonialism by France Fanon and Asada, because Asada is very basic for you to help you get your weight up so you can no longer criticize people when they are engaging in what they know on how to combat something. Now, if you upset, brother, I'm here for some healing. I'm here for you. I was there for you when you said dudes was trying to get at you on 25th. You never responded. A lot of people feel you want to, you know, try to give you some closure to your situation. But to call people, especially black women, bozos. And I can only hope you were referring to them. Not I. Homeboy, I'm nobody bozo. Shit. My street cred. Check. My prison card. Brother. My profile. Everything is public. So before you can consider somebody a protester, that which I'm not. All I'm there to do is encourage and keep them engaged. Because when you talk bad about what they're doing, you allow others to infiltrate. When you talk bad about what they doing, you bring their esteem down. And that's counter-revolutionary, brother. So I got to think, what would Comrade George do? What would Brother Huey do? What would Khalid Muhammad do in this situation?